Hello everyone and welcome back to the penultimate race of our F123 Lancia career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the US Grand Prix. Of course, just two rounds to go of the season here today and then for our series finale next time out in Interlagos. And it's safe to say the championship fight is very much heating up. Valtteri Bottas still has a 25-point lead at the moment. He could mathematically wrap this championship up this weekend here if he outscores ourselves and Lando Norris by enough. McLaren now 1-2 in the Drivers' Championship. We are their closest rival. They've now got a almost 50-point lead, 51-point lead, actually, in the Constructors as well. So they are looking, looking pretty good uh, in that regard at the moment. But we want to cause the upset of the century uh, before the end of this season. However, I'm getting a little bit worried that we might have to take some engine penalties before the end of the year. Going to try to avoid it as best as possible this weekend as we head here to Texas. Although I think, yeah, looking at it, unfortunately, uh, we're going to have to take a new control electronics and a new MGUK. So we'll try and get a few more things in the pool uh, just to make sure, you know, if, if we're taking grid penalties once, we may as well take all of them in one go, shouldn't we? So, yeah, we'll take all of those ready for this weekend. But, of course, yeah, if you're new around here, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well. Two races left of this series. I really, really want to be world champion. Well, 40 places worth of grid drops then means no matter what happens in the sprint race, we're going to be starting the main event from the back of the field here. So, the full eight points... On Sprint Race Saturday would surely be very, very useful lay on in this campaign. It feels weird, to be honest. I think this is the first time since probably F1 2019 um, where I'm actually finishing a series with more than about a week to go um, before the new F1 game launches. We're going to take about a month off uh, from my team this year. Simply put, of course, it, it, was let, it was straight back relative to last year's my team series, which seemed like a funny move. Uh, by code is but yeah next week I've actually got some news about F124 that I can't wait to showcase to you all as well so if you aren't already please do make sure you get yourself subscribed but yeah all folks at the moment is on trying to make sure that we put this thing as close to pole position as we possibly can um, yeah we've opted for a very very high wing setup here it's worked well for me in league racing in the past uh, that that's how sweaty we're getting on getting late on this season uh, I'm now running my old league racing setups Making our way though up through the final corner. It's felt like a tidy but quite conservative first lap here. Hamilton will go fastest. We're a second away. No, we're not. We're quicker. Ignore me then. Um, that's pretty good after the first run. Because then I felt there was definitely time to find. We're trying to get out onto our last ditch attempt then here in qualifying. Currently, there is less than a tenth of a second covering the top six. But it is Carlos Sainz that has gone fastest of anyone. I'm hoping as Alvin finishes his lap, he's going to jump out of my way immediately and give me a little bit of a slipstream as well there. But one of the Alpines a little bit further up, so they are going to be the next one and the only other car that hopefully we're going to have to deal with is three tenths found through Turn 1 alone. We are cooking. Oscar Piastri goes up onto the front row and immediately gets uh, deposited by his old teammate Lando Norris. But yeah, say qualifying pace late on this season has certainly been good in both Qatar and in Singapore before that. And three quarters of a second up by the time we make our way out of the S's. What on earth have we found in this car? Well, I think the only thing that can slow us down now is Esteban Ocon not getting out of the way in this final sector. We are 1.1 seconds up. We are finding time absolutely everywhere on this lap. And this might be about to blow everyone else out of the water as Esteban Ocon oh, he kind of he kind of got out of the way in the end costs us a couple of tenths as we make our way through the final sector of the lap though so unfortunately uh, the perfect lap is kind of going to disappear from me but making our way through the final couple of corners this should still easily be pole position though out of the final corner we go it is a one second improvement and it is P1 back to back well, as I mentioned, uh, we are using a little bit of a league racing setup here, um, and it is a bit more focused towards one lap pace. So, sprint race, we should be good. Real race, we might be set to struggle a little bit more there, but Valtteri Bottas, P8, at the end of sprint race Saturday, has not done the McLaren driver any favours. Hulkenberg, though, only good enough for P15, um, but we have got clear track ahead of us as we look towards Turn 1. 
forget pit stops, forget fuel management. It's pedal to the metal all the way here as we get ready for today's sprint. The back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint. Firestarter lines up on pole position and Lando Norris lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Leclerc, Hamilton, Gasly, Bottas, Sonoda, Verstappen, Magnussen, Russell, Ricardo, Ocon, Hulkenberg, Albon, Perez, Fittipaldi, Teo Porsche, Joe, Iwasa, and Liam Lawson. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We'll soon find out. Well, here we are then, trackside already for the USGP sprint race. Ten laps ahead of us, first of all, and this gives us a good idea as to what the tyre wear is going to be like when we get into the GP. But Lando Norris lining up alongside me on the grid. We want to try and hold off from him on the run up the hill in towards turn one. Sainz has took the gamble on a set of softs in his five red lights, though. And it's a mighty long hole, but it is lights out. And away we go. And look at that. Sainz immediately getting past Lando Norris on the run towards turn one. He's going to try to look around the outside of me. And look at that. Carlos Sainz just made it happen then. Norris tries to have a look down the inside as well there. And by the time we make it out of turn one, Carlos Sainz has absolutely romped through at the front of the field there. Red Bull taking the lead early on with a bit of a big gamble by Carlos. I'm not sure how well those tyres are going to hold up as we make our way through this sprint, but I don't think he could have asked for much more down at Turn 1. I honestly really, really struggle with that first breaking point on lap 1. I'm always so scared about locking up and running deep there, but you can see Carlos Sainz clearly no such worries for the Spaniards as we make our way out onto the back straight. Get your sunglasses out, everybody. Um, I really wish they got this fixed at some point in the future. Well, I'm working hard then to try and stay with Carlos early on in this race, but Lando Norris behind me. Um, it kind of seems like our top three are just pulling away a little bit. We do take fastest lap of the day, which I guess is nice. Um, but yeah, we aren't in the range of Sainz just yet. Well, Sainz is definitely trying to be a little bit strategic here. He's using his battery off of the S's there, just try and make sure he keeps me out of the range by the time we get to the back straight. I'm not too worried about getting to him immediately. I'm more intrigued to see actually where his tyres fall off uh, towards the end of the race here, just so we've got a little bit of data heading into the main event tomorrow, because of course we're going to have to really try something a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, but yeah, we just start to lose a little bit through some of the corners just because those tyres have got just that bit extra peak grip. We've got first time today as we start lap 5, but we got the DRS. Um, but still, we are not quite close enough. Oh, we are practically pushing Carlos along now. We're going to have a look down the inside at the hairpin. Oh, a little bit. Yeah, way too. Uh, maybe optimistic there. I think is going to be the way we're going to describe that one. Luckily, we've still got the DRS on him. Off of the exit of the corner, and as we try and use a bit more battery, how much straight line speed have we got over that Red Bull? The answer is a lot, but not enough once again there. We've got to try and go for a bit more of a composed move okay, next time round. Oh, but you can see, yeah, Sykes is feeling the pressure, and we are starting to overwork these tyres. Oh, nice run out of the final turn, though, as we start lap 7. Are we going to be able to get a run this time around? Carlos Sainz will go defensive, but not defensive enough. We'll get pushed right down to the inside there, but he's just got so much confidence. Maybe not for the better, though, that time around, as he'll run a bit deep through turn 1. We'll swoop through and up into the lead then. For the first time since the start of this race. But will we be able to break free before the DRS zone? I can't imagine so. Whoa! Carlos Sainz there. We just saw the proximity arrow flash up red. And well, Lando Norris, I'm sure, is loving this because he's immediately back in the fight there. Alex Albon out of the Grand Prix. And here goes Lando Norris down our inside then. So that's really not worked out well for me. Just saw Sainz trying to poke his nose back in. And I got very, very worried that we were about to get taken out there. A side-by-side -side will go with the McLaren driver up the back straight. Will either of us have enough speed? 
try and make sure they don't run into the back of Carlos. Then, as you wonder whether the two former teammates are going to work together. Lando Norris down the inside. We're still trying to hook it up around the outside on the exit of the corner. But ultimately, we haven't got enough grip. Oh, Lando Norris, big slide out of the final corner. And that might leave him vulnerable to try and make our way back down towards Turn 1. He's not going to go as defensive as Carlos Sainz did earlier on. But again, the AI so confident on the brakes there, as there is Alvin Stricken Williams. So I think that's just a mechanical failure. Lando, though, still without the DRS range of Carlos once again. So as you try and get out onto the back straight, going to try and pull well back alongside him. This one should be a fairly simple move, but that McLaren's got some fight in it in a straight line, let's not forget. So as we make our way down into the braking zone, Lando Norris still trying to look around the outside. We'll give him some room, but he does inevitably back out. And now we're in pursuit of that Red Bull again, who's just been given a little bit of breathing room right on board then as we make our way through the S's. Just see how much more grip we've got over Carlos Sainz here, despite the dirty A. You can see that Red Bull swinging around. Unfortunately, I'm going to make a little mistake on my own there as well as we try and navigate our way through. Take plenty of curb on the exit as we go over the top of the hill. I'm not worried about the fuel mark. I'm worried about the idea that Carlos Sainz has still got a little bit of an advantage here as we struggle to roll on the power out onto the back straight then. Is that Red Bull just starting to struggle a little bit? He's going to try and drain his battery here as we make our way down the back straight one final time. Sainz will go defensive. We'll go to the outside. Break late into the corner. Sainz though goes even later. So we'll try and get the switch on the exit. A little bit of wheel banging. Between myself and the Red Bull here as Sainz again will try and give himself the inside off the corner. But he gets a moment as we're trying to go around the outside. But Sainz is not going to back out of it. You've got to try and give the AI some room. Otherwise, they will quite happily tip you into a spin there. But as we make our way in towards the final couple of corners of the US Grand Prix Sprint Race here. We haven't led much this afternoon. But Carlos Sainz's tyres just have not quite got enough through the final corner. It is two back-to-back -back sprint wins, and we are back on top. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Well, not the result our points leader would have wanted, but it certainly makes things interesting going forward. Well, that wraps up the sprint. All that remains is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. Well, there we are then, taking a look at our sprint race results here. You can see four tenths of a second, the gap between myself and Carlos Sainz. But five more crucial points taken out of Valtteri Bottas in the Drivers' Championship. We need to be less than 34 back as we head to Brazil next weekend if we mathematically want a shot at the title. And still, you could make the argument that there is six drivers mathematically with a shot at the crown still. But likely by the end of tomorrow, that'll be down to just three or four. Let's do this thing. We're ready for the US Grand Prix. But starting from the back of the field, we have got an absolute mountain to climb. Here we are then in one of the fastest growing cities in the United States, the fabulous Austin in the great state of Texas. The circuit itself, 14 miles southeast of the city center, has been home to the US Grand Prix since 2012, the latest in a long list of iconic tracks to have that honor. It's the Circuit of the Americas then, situated 14 miles outside of the great city of Austin. This is a 3.6 mile lap with 20 corners, 10 to the left and 10 to the right and top speeds of around 200 miles per hour. Overtaking opportunities are available into turns 1 and 12, especially with that rear wing DRS wide open. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position, edging out Lando Norris, who'll start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Oscar Piastri, Hamilton, Bottas, Leclerc, Verstappen, Sonoda, Gasly, Magnussen, Ocon, Hulkenberg, Russell, Fittipaldi, Joe, Iwasa, Teo Porsche, Liam Lawson, Perez, Ricardo, Firestarter, and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. 
here we are then running it back once again. We don't start quite from last because Alex Alban with that mechanical failure yesterday has taken some grid penalties. Um, but we pretty much are still P21 on the grid. If we can somehow take points out of Bottas today, I will be incredibly happy. If we can take some points out of Lando Norris and move into P2, I think it will be nothing short of a miracle. But we've just got to try and stay out of trouble um, throughout the event for the rest of the afternoon. However, we are going to throw caution to the wind here and try and go really, really deep into the race on a set of the hard compound tyres here. Basically try and bank on a safety car uh, to hopefully bring us back into contention then. But I think we're probably going to be the only car on the hards, but it is five red lights. It's an awfully long hole, but it is lights out and away. We don't go anywhere there. I haven't used the hard tyres in so long. I forgot how many revs you need on them, but that's not going to be too much of a problem. As we'll have a nice clean view in towards turn one. We might even be able to try and get around the outside of a couple of people as well there. Right on the outside of Alban and my old teammate Daniel Ricardo. So we've actually ended up gaining a place off the start of this race there. But really just want to try and keep it clean and tidy early on. Don't want to take any major risks there as it looks like Oscar Piastri uh, has immediately moved himself up to the lead of the Grand Prix. So no one uh, can really make big moves forward early on today. As I think Lando Norris maybe has dropped back slightly. But so has Valtteri Bottas here as Albon trying to have a look down the inside in that Williams Lamborghini. He can try that. We'll try and have a go around the outside of his teammate Liam Lawson here. We really were expecting more progress by that Lamborghini team this season. Whoa! As I thought we were fully in behind Lawson there, but apparently not. But let's try and see if we can make a move down the inside into the next corner. Some more Fittipaldi there locks up just in front. We've got to try and watch out for him. Perez then in that Porsche car. Oh, try and have a look to the inside of Zhou Guan Yu. Zhou says absolutely not in that moment. And we'll try and get the power down past the Mexican as we make our way out into the back straight. He's done a pretty good job with that Porsche team this season. Of course, they took that podium, didn't they? Uh, in Singapore a few weeks ago. But yeah, he's done really, really well trying to get that team off the starting blocks this year. Uh, as we'll try and shift past Checo. I do certainly want to do more mod modded kind of stuff inside F124 um, when the game releases. Of course, this was the first year I've solely done our career mode on PC. So of course, we've been able to try and add more mods and things like that into the game. It's been a year of learning, and I can't wait to showcase more of it on F124. And now then, with the DRS enabled, we should be able to try and have a look past Zhou Guan Yu. Yeah, hopefully some moves now are going to be a little bit easier in this GP. But like I said, you know, we're not really too worried about aggressively making our way to the front or anything. We are just trying to be really, really smooth and careful with the car, because if we can get these tyres, you know, even sort of 20 laps into the GP... It gives us a window if there is a late safety car. I'm setting good consistent lap times early on here as Enzo Fittipaldi clearly wants to put up a little bit of a fight for it and is actually going to do quite a good job there. Uh, making me a little bit scared that he was going to lock up through turn one. We'll try and get a run on him though as we make our way into the S's. And Enzo Fittipaldi clearly never had any intention of giving me any room there. We'll try and fly back around the outside though through the next corner. Don't know what exactly he's playing at. We're in a championship fight here, sir. But then the Yumawasa hopefully is going to make my life a little bit easier than the Andretti car before him. Uh, if you're wondering why the Andretti livery isn't on the car this weekend, turns out I'm a moron and I forgot to put the right livery on, so I apologise for that. Um, but I, I guess we get a nice throwback Haas livery for the US Grand Prix. Theo Porsche, obviously my former teammate in this series... He's going to hang on to the position for now. A bit like we did in the sprint. We've got to have one overly optimistic dive bomb. Having a look though to the inside of Teo as we make our way up the back straight once again. That's pretty much all the back markers dealt with then in this race. Although clearly Porsche still wants to fight it as best as he can. So yeah, we've managed to make our way through those cars quickly. Um, and we're not even at one quarter's distance. We go. We've got a couple of cars fighting wheel to wheel just up in front. I believe that is Hulkenberg and Ocon for the final points paying position. And look at Hulkenberg making some moves. 
try and have a look then around the outside of Kevin Magnuson. He's going to give me... Oh, great. Thanks, George. You can always trust George Russell to make a mistake, can't you? Well, that's a real shame as well, because, of course, that also means um, that if we were on a, say, a softer compounded tyre, we could have boxed now but, and obviously gone on the hards to the end of the race. But now we're going to have to try and do a two-stop, I feel. Okay, um, yeah. We'll try and go straight over to the mediums. What is this man Ocon doing? We'll try and make one move on him. Maybe another one on George. No, Ocon is going to send it on me, apparently. The AI, a lot of them are sensing a bit of vulnerability in myself at the moment, because we can't afford to risk it into the pits we come then for a very, very early stop off these hard compound tyres. Like I said, we'll go mediums, try and get them to about lap 20, um, and then have to go on to a set of softs at the end of the day. But basically now, yeah, we're really praying for a safety car here, because um, that's going to be a quick way to get ourselves back in the fight. I guess this is going to allow me to just get a few laps under our belt in some clear air. Maybe we can try an undercut towards the front of the field. Um, but it is going to take a lot of work here as suddenly a hammer blow to our championship chances. We can't give up. We can't get too worried. Although I have got to think, you know, the smaller the deficit to Bottas going into Brazil, the better. I tell you what then, medium tyres. On our outlap, we've gone purple through sector two and sector three. Effectively now, everyone has got a pit stop to make between now and the end of the race. So that's the gap we've got to try and close in on those leaders. Um, but we are going to have a slightly better tyre pretty much to the end of the afternoon. Oh, purple through sector one, purple through sector two. And as we make our way through the final corner, I'm hoping it's about to be purple in sector three. A 134 flat. I believe that was only a tenth out from what we did in the sprint race yesterday. Going five seconds a lap quicker than Ricardo. But he is battling with Zhou Guan Yu. Oh, we've got yellows. We've got yellows. One of the Red Bulls, Carlos Sainz. And suddenly, it looks like his championship hopes are going to go up in smoke. Then Carlos Sainz, I think, is out of the US Grand Prix here. After leading the race early on, heartbreak for the Spaniards. Meanwhile, for us, it hasn't taken us long, but we're already trying to start making some moves again. That's over I knew pretty quickly. So it means we're back above where we started this race. We've just got so much extra grip at the moment. Down the inside of my former teammate, Daniel Ricciardo. Another nice, easy one pulled off. This back marker group do feel like a little bit of a menace to try and navigate through, but we have got fresher tyres and a lot more grip at the moment as Alex Alvin will jump out of the way in his Williams Lamborghini car. So yeah, clearly Alvin kind of appreciating... The weight of what is on our shoulders is all oh, cars into the pit lane then. So we're going to gain a few more spots then. Looks like we haven't really got many of the front runners, uh, with the exception of George Russell. He's going on to hards to see this race out. It's Liam Lawson trying to squeeze me defensive. We haven't been confident down at turn one much, but finally we have made a move happen there. Unless Van Ockham has stayed with that Alpine team throughout the entirety of this series. And see, yep, now as we try and make our way down the back straight, we're going to fly past him. Hamilton, I think, has just come back out onto the track on a set of hards, um, which he wants to take to the end of the afternoon. So we are more than a pit stop behind some of the front runners still. As we take bags of time out of both him and Lewis through the final couple of corners, Porsche dives into the pit lane over Lewis's nose. Suddenly now, yeah, we are a lot, lot closer to that Ferrari car. Maybe it's done a really good job undercutting a few other people here. We'll be out ahead of Norris. Oscar Piastri, I believe, was leading this race beforehand. There's contact between him and Lewis Hamilton. And we will get two for the price of one there off of Turn 1. Thank you very much, boys. Is Hulkenberg now up into P3. So both Lancer cars running well. There we go. We are going to see our top three peeling into the pit lane at the end of lap 13. So they've been able to go quite a distance on those soft tyres. We are back up then into the lead of the Grand Prix. So despite our woes, it doesn't look like Bottas is going to score huge points here. I think it's actually in our best interest to let Oscar Piastri buy 
simply because, of course, if he can outscore Lando Norris, that really does help us out mathematically. Maybe Mercedes are back um, with a little bit of intervention. Well, by Valtteri Bottas going long then, he's actually been able to jump himself up into a net P4 here. Um, but yeah, we're just starting to watch those gaps come down as here goes Piastri down the inside. Really don't want to try and fight it too much there as the Australian back through and into the lead. Oh, Lando Norris now breathing down my neck as we make our way out in the final corner. But yeah, Bottas, that lap was 1.8 seconds quicker than me. So I've got to be quite strategic here. We're actually going to let both Lewis and Lando by down at turn one. Simply so I'm not holding them up and potentially allowing Bottas to get even closer to the pair of them here. I want to still be ahead of that McLaren when we box again. But yeah, basically now, this is all about damage limitation. Bottas is going to probably score 12 points here. That would on paper give him a 32-point lead over myself if we didn't score. Um, I want that gap below 25 at the very least. Here we go. We're actually going to get a run on Lewis Hamilton this time round. Don't fight me too hard, Lewis. Come on, we've worked together pretty well so far today. Let's say, even if I wanted to, I don't think these tyres are going to go all the way to the end of the race. But come on, we don't want to slow down Lewis either. Maybe, just maybe, Hamilton can hold up Bottas and we can try and close back in on them towards the end. But we are going to be on softer, fresher tyres to the end of this race. But it just feels like such a gamble at the moment. We couldn't stay on these, though. They will be absolutely cooked um, by the end of the afternoon. But yeah, fingers crossed we come out ahead of those v carbs. I mean, we should pretty comfortably. I'm hoping we'll actually be fairly close to our teammate Hulkenberg here, who is just outside of the points. Okay, let's go now. Come on. Perfect job. Pretty tidy stop. So if the race were to finish like this, we would be out of the Drivers World Championship. And if we keep doing things like that, we'll also be out of the Drivers' World Championship. Bottas now will have a 34 point, sorry, a 35 point lead, and there would only be 34 points available. We have got to go. Oh, Hulkenberg, a little bit of a wobble. I'm hoping our teammate doesn't make my life too difficult. Down the inside we'll go, and immediately back up into P11. Then, as once more purple through that middle sector. I mean, the amount of time we take out of Magnussen through that first sector is absolutely ridiculous. We've already gapped Hulkenberg by three seconds here, so we are flying. Got well, to be careful, though, that we don't burn, don't burn out these tyres before the end of the race. It's down the inside of Magnussen. We'll go out onto the back straight, and we'll even get some DRS for free on George Russell. But look at how quick that Aston Martin Honda is to make our way down this back straight. Russell, don't do it again, sir. I'm not going to hold any prisoners. Down the inside we'll go. Cheeky double overtake. And back into the points, and now... If the race were to finish like this, we would still mathematically be in it. The final corner as well then. What's the new fast lap of the day going to be? A 133 flat. And Hamilton, I notice, is still keeping Bottas at bay. Is Hamilton suddenly going to repay the favour? And maybe we can still get to him. Lee and Sonoda next up on the old hit list. You can see at the moment how much extra grip we've got. On the exit, onto the back straight there. And for the second lap in a row, we're going to make at least one overtake. Will it be two again? Oh, very, very scared there as Gasly actually ram into the side of his former teammate, Yuki Tsunoda. We were lucky to back out of that one. I could just see what was unfolding around me. That great awareness, if I do say so myself. But down the inside of Yuki will go nonetheless. And back into P7. I cannot believe the advantage we've got at the moment with this offset strategy. We are gaining so much time on absolutely everybody here as their medium tyres all seem to be falling off. We are just cooking on the fresh set of softs still right at the final corner to the inside of Charles Leclerc. Yes, our times aren't as good as they were just a few laps ago, but we are still easily probably two seconds a lap faster. Leclerc around the outside at one, but we've just got the confidence there to shut the door. And we're now back into P6. And look at that, Bottas. He's right there. Well, the advantage we've got is definitely getting smaller and smaller each and every lap towards the end of this race. But we have rocked up to the back of Max Verstappen here. And maybe, just maybe, we can still try and get a podium. Can we go the long way around? No. Not quite there anymore. We have not got that much of an advantage over the Dutchman. And a car that, yeah, has been very, very efficient through the corners all season long. 
Bull have definitely struggled a little bit more with the straight line speed as well. Have a look down the inside of the Dutchman, who might still at the moment be in the title fight, but I think the end of today is going to mark the end for both of the Red Bull cars here. But this is the man we need to beat, Valtteri Bottas. We have got the advantage in speed as we make our way down the back straight. Hamilton, though, is going to try and swing across very, very defensive at the last moment there. Bottas almost into the side of the Ferrari, but we will make the move work on the flying fin. And suddenly now, well, we were worried five laps ago that we might get knocked out of the World Championship here. It's not gone from that. So suddenly now it's how many points can we take out of Bottas before the season finale in Brazil there as we make our way through the final couple of corners. Can we go to the outside of Lewis? No. So clearly he's not certainly not working to try and help me out towards the end of the day. He's just trying to defend from absolutely everybody, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to do a lot. As that in the final corner will get on the battery. We will sail past Lewis Hamilton and we are back into the podium places, but with three laps to go. Could we get past Oscar Piastri? Well, rounding the final quarter then to start the last lap of this Grand Prix. And it looks like once more, we're going to be locked into a late race battle here. This time round with the Australian Oscar Piastri there. Lando Norris has got enough at the front of the field there. So McLaren still showcasing how much pace they've got. But it seems to be Lando Norris that is getting the better of his teammate here late on this season. And could be on for a first Formula 1 World Championship. But as we navigate our way through these S's, these extra three points if we jump Oscar Piastri could be absolutely pivotal come the end of the season. The gap is 20 points coming into this race. It could be down to as little as 11 there. Hamilton seems to have enough to keep Bottas back towards the end of this race. I don't know if Verstappen is potentially going to try and look for a move on the McLaren on this final lap as well, but trying to put the power down out onto the back straight here. We surely are going to be able to get the run on Oscar Piastri, who is going to go defensive from me. Will we have enough, though, to go clean around the outside? No, we won't. Oscar will try and defend for all his worth. We'll try and switch him off for the corner. So we got him on the outside as we make our way through these final few turns. These are critical corners late on in the day, but around the outside will go a little bit of front locking through the next corner. And Oscar Piastri will try and get back up the inside there, but can't find the grip. But Lando Norris through the final couple of turns. It is going to be two wins in the last three Grand Prix for him. And that gap to Bottas has been cut down to just five points. But from the back of the field, with an extra stop, we are going to come through for P2 and keep our title hopes alive. Not just victory today then, but the championship as well. What a spectacular season they've had. Congratulations to the whole team. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they are very much at one with the car, which is a cliche, but it's true. It's not an easy process, and that work is very much paying off. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations, and it's going to be McLaren picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. So let's see what effect this result has had on the driver's standings. The gap at the top of the championship has been cut down after a difficult race today for our championship leader. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? I think for driver of the day, I'd probably pick Lando Norris. He lived up to every inch of his reputation today, and I think he'll be going home, quite rightly, a bit proud of himself. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. And with that result, McLaren can no longer be touched at the top of the table. They've had their ups and downs this season, like all teams, but they've weathered the storm and they've come out on top. McLaren are world champions once again. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next.
Well, there we are then. Lando Norris, he takes the win today. And that means the gap at the top of the table has been cut down dramatically there. But our fastest lap, almost two seconds clear of anyone else. That's just how good those soft tyres were towards the end of the race. And with that fastest lap bonus point as well, for all we know, that might be critical come the end of the season there. But it does mean championship-wise, 11 points now in it between Valtteri Bottas, Lando Norris and myself. It is going to go down to the wire next weekend in Brazil. And luckily as well, the sprint race is not going to decide it. But yeah, looking behind though, Hamilton, Verstappen, Carlos Sainz, six points covering them as well. So there is still a lot to play for as we head into the final round of the season. Constructors, well, McLaren have wrapped that up. It is theirs that is all done and dusted now. McLaren back on top in the Formula 1 world for I think the first time uh, since the late 90s uh, but yeah Lancia you can see nine points back from Mercedes late on this year we were hoping to just try and beat out Aston Martin and Alpine uh, but we really do seem to have come back fighting right towards the end of the campaign there but thank you all so much for watching this video if you have enjoyed please do make sure to leave a like get yourself subscribed and we will be back very soon ready for the finale of our F123 career mode <laughs>